Hello, my name is Cameron Musavi, and I work at the Coconino National Forest. I am a natural resources specialist. Coconino National Forest covers a large part of northern Arizona, including Flagstaff and Red Rock, which is part of Sedona, the Mogollon Rim, which is near Clint's Well. So it's a large portion of northern Arizona, and that's where Coconino National Forest is located. You may be wondering how I started working here. I was living in Washington and working there at the time, and I decided to move back to Phoenix. At that time, I felt like it was the right time to start looking for a career. I didn't know what I wanted to do yet, but I knew that I liked being outside. One of my big hobbies was being outside. I also thought that maybe I could be a teacher of the deaf, and I wanted to try working some odd jobs. I worked as a bus driver at the School for the Deaf, and I realized that it wasn't my thing. And so I decided that I wanted to work outside. I attended Northern Arizona University. I applied and was accepted, and I moved to Flagstaff. And I studied in the Parks and Recreation program. After my freshman year, a friend of mine who worked for the Forest Service contacted me and told me about the CRAG program, the Civil Rights Action Group. They were recruiting people from different minorities. They were recruiting people who were African American, Hispanic, Asian American, individuals with disabilities. They were trying to get more diversity in the agency. He knew that I was deaf and he contacted me to see if I was interested in applying for the program. I applied and I was accepted right away. The program was the SCEP, the Student Career Experience Program. In order to be accepted to the program, you have to have a certain GPA, you have to meet a certain number of hours, and upon graduation, you will receive a job. I graduated and I got my job here at the Forest Service. My first summer working here, I did a lot of field work. I did cleaning of campgrounds, did trail work, fence building, repairing old fences. I did a lot of tech work and that was nine years ago. Over the years, my roles here have changed. I work more in an office with the computers, doing data management, providing support to districts. If they need information, I share that information with them. So that's how I got to where I am today. For daily communication or for chit chat with colleagues, I try to read people's lips to understand what they're saying. We'll use gesture, we'll use writing. I do teach a 45 minute to one hour brown bag lunch where I teach American Sign Language here on Fridays. That usually happens more in the winter and less in the summer when everyone is so busy. There are some people here who know sign and some people here who know how to fingerspell. We use I am instant messaging here as well. We use email. I like to use Word documents to take a screen capture of something and after I have a screen capture I can add arrows, I can add different explanations of what I'm trying to say and then email that to a colleague so they understand what I'm saying rather than trying to sit down with them and explain what I'm uh, trying to do to them, and that's been a big help for me. Technology has really been a big help. We can definitely use technology to our advantage. I use interpreters as well if they're available here in the community. However, Flagstaff is a small town. If there are interpreters available, we'll use them here. If not, we sometimes have to use interpreters who drive up from Phoenix. 
We use video remote interpreting as well, which can be a challenge because of technology. We don't have Wi-Fi in the building for security reasons. Once we have Wi-Fi, it'll be easier to use video remote interpreting with an iPad. That's something that we'll be able to use someday. I have to be creative with communication, but that's how we make it work. I was contacted by the Phoenix Day School for the Deaf last year. They had an idea to teach their younger students, I believe the third and fourth grade students, about animals. Employees at the School for the Deaf learned through word of mouth that I worked here at the Forest Service. I asked my supervisor and my supervisor gave me the approval to do that. We have a PowerPoint that we use and we also have a bones box and in that box we have animal fur, we have skeletons, we have bones, we have books talking about different animals, um, what they do at night, what they like to eat. So most of those materials are created for students who can hear. Some of the curriculum encourages students to make the animal noises. However, we removed that part and added more visuals for the students who are deaf. Most of the information that I used, I loaned from the game and fish department. I had to go over there and get their information and I had to alter it for the students at the Phoenix Day School for the Deaf. The students were really engaged in the presentation. They asked me a lot of questions. They asked me if I was actually the one who hunted all those animals. And I told them that I just brought them that day to talk to them about the different animals. I really enjoyed doing that. And I hope I can do something like that again in the future. I would like to create more videos and work with high school students. I'm hoping in the future we could have some more high school students here in a volunteer program. That's something that I would really like to see expand here somehow. If you have some questions about the Coconino National Forest, if you have questions about where to go, whether or not it's worth going, when the trails are closed or when they're open, where to camp if you need a large campsite or a small campsite, if you need a special permit, or if you're curious about the rules in general, it's best to go to Google and type in Coconino National Forest. There you'll find our official website. On the website, you'll see recreation, and that's where you'll find most of the information about the trails, boating, activities, and camping. You'll see other links there as well if you're interested in other information like special projects that are being worked on. The most popular site in the National Forest is Sedona. A lot of deaf people like to go to Sedona. When you go there, you feel good. It's a beautiful place. But there are a lot of other hidden gems that you may have to look for, and you'll be shocked to know what we have here in Northern Arizona. If you have any other questions, you can contact me and I'd be happy to show you.